Welcome to the Shotgun Alias Engine introduction video. We will step through the new shotgun menu that appears in Alias when you are running in a design studio that has Shotgun up and running. We will also start to introduce you to some key concepts that will help you best leverage the power of Shotgun and its ecosystem of products and components. First thing is to launch Alias from Shotgun Desktop Launcher. No more using desktop icons or the start menu for this, otherwise your Shotgun integrations will not load correctly. Now that we have launched, let's step through the new shotgun menu that appears in Alias and let you know what each item is for. The top line in the menu indicates your current context, and since we have just launched, it is still set to the project where you launched from. The term context is important in shotgun as it indicates what you are currently working on. We will be changing it shortly, but let's look through the menu entries to familiarize ourselves with them. The context indicator sidecar menu has a jump to shotgun link which takes you to the web view of shotgun. Open log folder does just that and work area info. Let's open it now. There are some tabs set up to verify your context, the active apps, and the environment. There are also some buttons to quickly access the file system, the support homepage, and other things. You should not need to access most of this information unless you are troubleshooting. One other quick tip is that anywhere you see the style of triangle, like a greater than sign, it means that there is a panel available by clicking on it. This is true for all shotgun toolkit windows. Let's access File Open, and as you can see, there are two versions of it. Don't worry, they are the same as there are different ways to set up menu favorites within the Shotgun Toolkit. Like in Shotgun Desktop, everything is customizable, so do not be alarmed if there are more or less things on your screen compared to the screen in the video. Shotgun File Open defaults to the My Tasks tab on the left side of the interface. You can also navigate directly into Assets, and you have various filter options available. In Assets, you can toggle between all the assets and just the ones you are assigned to. You can also use the lower filter area to show and hide tasks based on different pipeline steps. And of course, there is the search field. Let's just type in Light to trim the list down to just assets containing the string of text. Let's go back to My Tasks to show more detailed information about the wire files themselves. For my design task on the Doors asset, I have some files and you can see that it defaults to showing me only the latest version. If I toggle all versions, I can see a list of the other files available. The overlaid publish icon indicates that this file has been published. You can use the tabs to also narrow down what files you want to look at. The right mouse button has many different options available in case you need to revert to an older version of a file. You may have seen some tooltips popping on screen, so I will pause to show that there is information available via the tooltip in various sections of the file open interface. I am now going to select a task that is new and does not have any work started as of yet. As you can see, there are no files found for this task. I click on New File in the lower left of the UI to start working. Let's go back to the Shotgun menu and note that the task named Alias Export Preparation for Asset SD12 is now the current context. You should also see that there are more entries in the Shotgun menu. We will get through those in more detail during this video, but the first thing we will cover is doing a file save to complete the basics. Select File Save to bring up the interface. The simplified dialog has all the logical defaults set up for you. You can change the name Scene to see how it affects the preview of the file name. You will note that we are using the Shotgun Toolkit template system to control part of the naming. This also affects where on disk this will go. We can make the interface larger to see the entire path if required. Let's go ahead and click Save now. Let's immediately get File Save open again and you will note that the version is automatically incremented with all the same info. Most of your work can be managed this way. Let's toggle the browser with this triangle icon. As you see, we now have access to a save interface that looks a lot like the file open interface from earlier. This allows you to save to a different task or asset context, which can be useful for properly managing your files. The most important part of the lesson is to use the shotgun file open and save and do not use the alias file menu for this anymore. That concludes the basics of file opening and saving using the alias shotgun engine. Let's move on and start to look at the publisher next. Let's open the last version of the work file that I want to publish. Now let's select Shotgun Publish to bring up the interface. The left side shows you the published plugins that are configured in your environment. There may be more or less items here on your screen once again. The bottom left of the interface has buttons that can be used when the publisher is run in standalone mode, usually launched from Shotgun Desktop. On the right side we also have the task and link selector areas which are already set correctly since we launched Publisher from within Alias. If we hover above them, we see a helpful tooltip like we saw earlier with the work file interface. 
Let's create a thumbnail to use for this operation. Click once in thumbnail and you can then sweep drag any part of the display to use for the associated thumbnail image. Another quick tip is that you can regenerate a thumbnail just by clicking it again. No need to start the entire process over. Let's turn on shading and regenerate the thumbnail. Adding a description is always important, so let's do that now. The lower right has the validate and publish buttons. Let's click on validate first to see what happens. A green circle check mark now appears beside the selected operation you are about to perform. If you click on an individual icon or the message text at the bottom of the UI, it will take you to a page that provides more details for you. Let's close this overlay window and proceed with publishing by clicking the publish button. This operation may take some time depending on the size of the data you are working with and the number of export plugins you have selected. That is the primary reason you have the option to validate before committing to the publish itself. If it is going to take some time, you may initiate it just ahead of a coffee break, lunch, or heading out for the day. Once it is complete, you will see a message showing you that it has completed successfully. You can access more details again to review the technical information about the publish operation. There are some links available to take you directly to the Shotgun web interface for convenience. Another critical thing to note is that the work file automatically gets incremented up when a publish is performed. That covers the basics of publishing a file from within Alias. Let's move on to take a look at the loader next. We are back with the fresh launch of Alias, using Shotgun Desktop of course. To leverage the loader, we are first going to set our context to a task that has no work started yet. Just a quick refresher to use File Open and the New File button to achieve that. Let's open the Shotgun Loader interface and you will see that there are lots of similarities to the windows we have already covered earlier in the video. You see the Assets, My Tasks and Library tabs to the left side of the UI. You have a text search field and the ability to filter based on the published file type and once again this is a customizable list so your entries may be different than what is on screen. There are also some subtle differences for accessing documentation and the ability to change the views within the window itself. Let's select a task that we know has multiple publishes available to access a side panel using Show Details. As we toggle between the two different publishes, we can see the history of the previous publishes available in the lower right of the interface. You will see the Actions menu appear in multiple places, and if you hover over a current publish to see the tooltip, it explains what the default double-click option will do. We can note that it is different for wire files versus WREF files. For our example, we want to put together a few different WREF files, so let's navigate to the different assets we have set up and double-click to create the references in our scene. We can see that we get a message in the blue bar at the top of the UI and an additional dialog verifying our action is complete. Let's add a couple of more things to our file and then save our work. Let's now look at the scene breakdown interface. It is much more simplified and streamlined as it provides a list of publishes that are referenced in your scene. You can quickly toggle all elements that are up to date and all the ones that have a more recent publish available for you. Select All Red and Update Selected are optimized for you to pick up the latest data available and go. That covers the basics of the loader and its partner tool scene breakdown. Let's move on and look at the shotgun panel next. Let's access the shotgun panel now that we have our scene opened once again. The shotgun panel has been designed to keep artists inside of Alias instead of having to bounce between the shotgun web interface and Alias to perform basic operations, check on information, and create and reply to notes. We can toggle between the various tabs to see all the different type of activity that has been happening with this task and asset. There are a few other options in the triangle menu here as well. Now that I have started work, I can set this task to in progress. Let's go back to the notes section to access the complete note by double clicking it. We can see that I can quickly reply to a note that includes an attachment or a screen capture, so let's go ahead and do that now. Once I have completed my note entry, I will click on the home icon to return me to the landing place for the task in Shotgun Panel. There are many more things I can look up to confirm in the other tabs here, keeping me focused on alias and not always needing to go back to my browser interface. Let's move on to talk about scene snapshots next. Let's now look at the Scene Snapshot tools. You can see Snapshot in the upper favorite section and both entries in the lower Scene Snapshot section of the menu. When I initiate a snapshot, I get a simple interface with the ability to add a description and take a screenshot. Let's go ahead and do that now. Once it completes, it indicates success and allows us to view the snapshot history right away. We can see the different thumbnails and notes we have created for ourselves. 
If we wanted to restore a specific snapshot to move forward with, we can select Restore to make it the current work file once again. Although this tool is not mandatory to use, it allows artists to explore some different variations that are tied to a specific version of the work file in question. It's simple, but powerful. We have now toured through most of the entries in the new shotgun menu that appears in Alias. Let's just select About here to show that it is the standard legal notifications that pertain to a release. Hopefully you are now comfortable to get started using the Shotgun Engine for Alias. Please refer to the documentation if anything is still unclear or if you would like to learn more. Thanks again for watching.